Welcome to the Layup Maker. This is version 2.0, and we are starting with week one, what we call from taker to maker, trying to just change your thinking about taking layups and progress toward how we can make more layups. So instead of just being happy with attempts, we want to make sure we're converting, finishing, scoring on as many of those attempts as we can. And to start that, we're going to talk about three major things. The first is the seven-part chain. And there's actually a technique we call back chaining that we actually use on the court to connect each of these seven pieces from the end point of actually making the layup all the way back to where we caught the pass and what our footwork's going to look like to get into our attack. What we talk about the connection between ball handling and footwork into finishing. The second one is what we call the deadly default. Just thinking about what is our default finish and what are we going to do to get really good at that so that the defense is essentially fighting us to take it away. And then we can talk about counter moves once they start doing that. And then the third one is creating opportunities. Similar framework, having the footwork connected to the finish allows us to know specifically what we're going to be doing at each step on our way to the basket and be able to use that against a defender to create counter moves as we get into week two, three, and four going forward. First, the seven part chain. Uh, simple as it sounds, two steps is where we start. And depending on how experienced and advanced player you are, we might spend only three tries getting that mastered because you're already good at it we might spend several dozen tries to really get two steps working perfectly and mastering that first piece before we move to step two and the two-step rule in basketball is counted after you pick up your dribble so the way we practice it is without a dribble starting in a lunge stance like you'll see on video in a second taking two steps without needing to dribble kind of removing one of the complications of making a layup by already having the ball in our two-hand grip. The second point is getting our knee above our hip. I like to use the analogy of a puppet string. If you've ever seen a string puppet, arms and hands, arms and knees are tied together. So when you go up for your layup, we want that same side of your body knee to get above your hip. And that really drives your force upward into more vertical jump, prevents the problem that's very common if you're a fast athletic player on a fast break of hitting the ball too hard off the backboard just taking that momentum vertical by getting your knee above your hip is our favorite solution. The next part of the seven part chain is the pizza pan. So we kind of got our first two organized around our legs and our knee. The next three points are all on our upper body. So pizza pan is our holding point where we're going to hold the ball into our shot, which we put it on top of your shoulder, outside your chin on whichever hand you're going to shoot with. So if we're on the right side of the basket shooting a standard right hand layup, we're going to put it right side of chin on top of our shoulder with our fingers pointed back toward our shoulder in a two-handed grip. And that's what we call pizza pan. If we hold it there and shoot it from there while taking two steps and getting our knee above our hip, like that's going to solve the majority of our problems with basic layup mechanics to make it happen. The fourth point is elbow to eyebrow. So just like we talk about in shooting, if you've taken our sniper course, trying to finish our fall through with our elbow touching our eyebrow makes that ball again, go upward instead of forward if we're running fast down the court. And then the last part here, the fifth point is our two finger push. So we like to talk about the ball rolling off our index and our middle finger like railroad tracks because that Center point between those two is lined up with the rest of your forearm. It allows you to do a lot of good things with your arm and fingers synchronized instead of them going two different directions. We're going to stop there to see a video of the first five points, and then we're going to come back to look at number six and seven. And those two are dribbling with the left foot, talked about ball handling and finishing in combo, and then elbows to ears after you dribble. We're going to see each of our seven part chain here. First is just getting two steps. You're going to see it slow motion. Step one, step two, and driving up into our layup. Probably the hardest shot I've taken because I had to go slow mo. Next part is getting knee above hip, just exaggerating that right knee in this case, driving it above our right hip, 
or on this side above our left hip. Then we've got our pizza pan after I come down from over my head and putting it on top of that shoulder. So the left hand is pushing it. And then we got elbow to eyebrow, trying to exaggerate that height. And finally, our two finger follow through. Number six was dribble timing, trying to get our right hand dribble with left foot. That sets up the last two steps after dribble to be a legal basketball move and to go as far as possible while only needing one dribble. We're looking at a floater here next, a little bit deeper range, but applying the same motion. Uh, some people look at a floater as an advanced move, but because it's the same pizza pan motion of our arm, we like to introduce that here in week one. So the deadly defaults, what we talked about as part number two. The wing angle here is where most people practice layups. Some people, some teams, it's the only angle you practice layups from. So it's what you're most comfortable with and what you're most used to, which is why we're starting there and not starting with some of our more unique angles that we'll get into in week four. So we talked about the pizza pan already, the wing angle starting on that shoulder. It's really a matter of geometry from there. If you attack the basket, the backboard, from the wing and you have it on your shoulder and you push it up at all forward, it's going to hit the backboard and essentially fall in the basket. From there, it's just a matter of refining those pieces. Can we get the final two steps to be really large and aggressive? Can we make our knee above our hip to get vertical? Can we have it on our pizza pan and push our elbow to eyebrow and push our two finger follow through to make all those pieces line up to accuracy? And then the default part of this is just making it so that you never miss, right? Getting comfortable with this at slow motion, at fast speed with somebody on your hip, with somebody trying to block you, like putting more and more progressive challenges in front of yourself until you make it every time, no matter what. And then once you're able to do that, you force the defense to work really hard to try and stop you because they know you're going to score every time you take a layup. And that's what opens up our counter moves and our more advanced finishes, our other options for finishes. What we try to get to by the end of this course is the ultimate goal of any hand, any foot, any time. Meaning, whatever the defense throws at you, you can come up with a combination to still finish with a pretty good chance of scoring at the rim. But it all starts from a default where a lot of players get off track. What we'll talk about in week three and four with some decision making is that a player will start practicing a really cool move that they like, but it's not a primary move, right? It's not capable of being a default. It requires the defense to do a certain thing to trigger it. And so if you do it without that trigger, you end up out of position, probably missing, even though nobody was guarding you, right? So having our deadly default, our pizza pan, standard angle layup, making sure you can make that every time, allows us to build from there because the defense has to take that away. Really important, just mental framework of how you think about layups and finishing at the rim. Regardless of what your skill level is, if you can make a standard layup every time, you're going to be in pretty good shape. All right, let's talk about creating opportunities. So again, the framework I like to work on is how does ball handling and footwork and finishing all go together so that you have kind of a complete skill package. You can imagine if you're really good at finishing, like if you practice with us and you get your final two steps, you get all the pieces we just talked about, then you're making it all the time in practice, but then we put a defender in front of you and you can't get past them to get a chance to get to the room, then all that work on finishing really doesn't do you any good. So it's the convergence of ball handling and finishing that we're after to get you able to get past your defender and have more chances to take layups and then working on those pieces we just talked about to make sure you can make layups. So again, from taker to maker by the end of our four weeks. And the opposite is also true. If you can't get to the rim without the ability to get past the defender, then you're going to be in uh, pretty bad shape, right? You can't make layups if you never get to the rim, and you can't get to the rim without the ability to get past a defender. So three different footworks we're going to work on. One is a slider step, ball handling move, what we call the L-step crossover. 
just transitioning your weight side to side before you attack forward, trying to get that defender out of your way so you can go past them. Uh, stride, stop, catch and drive. One of our most common skills that we work on with every player, every level is catching ready to shoot and then being able to use good footwork to drive out of that and drive quickly and aggressively and with a fast decision so that you have an advantage when you attack. And then the third one is a little more unusual, what we call a scissor step, which is specific to a game situation where a defender's coming at you from the side and you've got a clear path to drive. You don't need to catch as if you're going to shoot. You already know you're driving. So you can cheat the footwork a little bit by using a scissor step to get there faster. So we're going to see each of those on video again here and walk you through them on the court. This is our slider step going from left to right into a forward dribble with our left foot that sets up our final two steps to basket. Between the legs is similar. We're stepping with our right foot as the ball goes through our leg and then stepping with our left foot as we attack dribble forward. The third one is behind the back. We're going to wrap with our left hand and our right foot trying to get that timing synchronized. Left hand with right foot and then attack forward with left foot. Again, that dribble timing is trying to be always the same so that we know what our last two steps feel like and we're capable of getting that consistent every time. Right to left is the same progression. We slide with our left foot as we cross and we attack forward with our right foot as we dribble. As you get comfortable with that footwork, you can start tying in each of our seven parts chain pieces again coach will help you identify one at a time where you're focusing your attention if your footwork's good and your ball handling skills are there then we're trying to go crossover into dribble into pizza pan or into our two finger follow through the last two sets of footwork here we mentioned stride stop and drive catching like a shooter reaching with a pivot and then dribbling Again, it ends up with our right hand and left foot on the dribble. So we have two steps remaining after that. Right foot reach before dribble with left foot. That's the essential factor. If you've done our footwork course or even our sniper course, we end up coming back to this in a lot of different ways, a lot of different courses, because it is an essential skill. Uh, here's the mirror image driving left. Tagging to the left hand, we're still going to use our right foot. Dribble goes with right foot on the left side. And again, we're trying to piece this together so that everything we've worked on toward the rim with our last two steps forward stays the same. And then finally, our scissor step. Again, just a kind of a unique move here that we're using for a specific situation. It's just good to be aware of because game situation applies. You're going to be able to get there a lot faster. If you can do your scissor step, by splitting your feet apart, leaning forward, you're gonna have a speed advantage versus catching like a shooter and then driving from our stride stop like we normally would. All right, that's it so far for week one. Taker to maker, our three main priorities again. Build that seven part chain so that you know your shot all the way through from the two steps through your fingertips. You know what it's supposed to feel like, what it does feel like when it's going correctly, and all the pieces you need to stack that puzzle up and make your layup work better and work at high speed and work against defense. The deadly default, thinking about layups and finishing at the rim differently as having a default first and getting the defender to have to come and fight you to take it away, opening up other opportunities. And then thirdly, again, creating opportunities with our footwork trying to be really confident and capable and certain of what our feet are doing to get us into an attack mode that's going to take us to the rim with the opportunity to finish. Again, getting us more options, more opportunities to take layups by using good footwork and ball handling skills, and then using our deadly default and our seven-part chain to make more of those layups. That's it for week one. We'll see you on the court.